I'm out here in front of the two clematis in my front garden that have bloomed. Now these are both type two pruning clematis. And now I'm going to, you can see all these seed heads. I'm gonna take some little garden shears and I am just gonna go along and prune all of these back. I am not too precious about it. I'll come in and just prune away. Now, this is to promote a rebloom, as I may have mentioned already. And type two pruning clematis bloom on old wood as well as new wood or new growth, however you wish to pronounce it. Now, um, I could just go down and prune them off right down to like 18 inches or foot from the ground, they would put on a whole new flesh of growth and bloom. How tall they bloom or how tall it would grow again depends upon your climate. Uh, sun's coming over, I was trying to get out here before the sun, but depends on your climate, growing conditions, where it's located, etc. cetera. Um, so there's no one answer to how to get your clematis to rebloom. I just read a blog post and it was saying, and it was titled how to get your clematis to continue blooming. And it was rather, really rather misleading because it just lumped all clematis together. And we know there's three pruning types and basically led you to believe that just by doing this, you could keep it continually blooming. Now that's not the case. Though I'm pruning this back, it will be a couple months before I get any more blooms. This last year, I did not prune at all. Um, so from whatever, there were still old vines and stuff on it all through the winter, and then the spring, and then all this new growth came, and I got a most spectacular bloom. A lot of times, and even in a former blog post, I had put out how I prune these back in spring and or fall, almost to the ground. Um, and that's doable, you will get blooms. But I was amazed by not pruning in my growing conditions that I had such a, a much more spectacular bloom. Now, I will put in the caveat that we did get a lot of rain and snow this winter, so maybe it was the extra water that helped it to be more productive. But I'm gonna test it again and see next year if I get just as much, because we'll probably get some more drought years. Um, if I will get just as much bloom as I did this year. But you see, I'm leaving a lot on here. And if I wanted to go down, like there's several canes coming from the ground that are large um, and take those all the way down, then I'll get some blooms maybe lower down on the vine. Um, I don't know if you can see me pointing down <laughs> with these, but um, that, that I would go in with these so I could be more precise if I did that. And I mean, I guess we could go down and look at the base of this and see how many nice big vines are coming up from the base and then decide whether or not I wanna cut some down there. So um, let's go ahead and take a look. I'm hoping you can see down here, I'm working around a plant here, some Canterbury bells, and I'm gonna prune back these canes here, these dead these, um, seed pods and, uh, and growth. And then I can see what I'm working with down here. Now, if you want an easy way to propagate clematis, I have a blog post on layering, where you lay a vine against the ground um, and let it root down there. So here's a bunch of these. So let's see what I've got going down here. So it's growing from way over here. Can you see in here? I don't know. Yeah, it looks like I can see, you can see. I've got a little tiny screen on my camera, so sometimes it's hard for me to see what's going on. So let's get all these out of the way. Okay, let's see. Oh, wow, I've got quite a few canes coming up. One, two. One, two, three, four. So what I'm gonna do is, let me see if that's got any new growth on it. I, it does. So hopefully you can see down here. This one, I'm gonna take down to the ground. And then I will follow this up 
by pulling, I'll see where it's going to, what it's doing, and then just cut it away. And even this one, this was new growth, but short. So that can go up there. So this vine is coming up. That's pretty much a new vine. Whoops. Yeah, that one was already short, okay. Pulling out all the ones that I've cut. So that one is good. So I need to follow this down and see where it's coming from. All right, that's coming from over there. Plus, it's a good time to get in here and weed when I cut this all away. Got some oxalis in here I need to clean out. I'll get my gloves on and do a better job with that. So I have some of these vines I've let to go up and others I've cut shorter. Let me see, I can't see my camera, the sun's in it. But here, I've cut shorter. These will throw out new growth. Hopefully I get blooms down here. This is my little um, packet of bugs, beneficials, um, that I hang around the garden. So here, this one I've cut off so I can go in and continue cutting it away or pulling it away and it will regenerate growth. So, that's all good. What about this? This one's a cut off. And that is how I prune for um, reblooming. So I'll cut this one back. Now, like I said, all of these will put out new growth and it will rebloom. Okay, I'm pretty much following these. I'm, I better watch what I'm doing rather than yet talking. Okay, that one can be trained up. Okay, there's, that one over there is Bees Jubilee and this one is Killian Donahue. So, but basically I'm gonna do the same thing with this one and try to avoid the blooms that are left. And then look at this one's already putting out new growth. But this will promote even more new growth by pruning off the deadhead or deadheading the seed heads and giving it a little bit of a prune. Um, and again, I will not see blooms on these again until fall or end of summer. And, um, and the bloom will not be as dramatic usually as it is in the spring. But it is a rebloom. And that's all I expect. You will not have on these two varieties a continual bloom. Now I'm going to take you and show you a type 3 pruning clematis that does bloom longer though it starts later than others. And then I'll show you the one that I will not expect any new blooms on this summer whatsoever. I wanted to show you this one. This is um, sweet sugar lilac, something like that. And it is a type one pruning clematis. Now type one is you only deadhead off the old blooms, but you do not prune it un unless you prune it right after it's, it's bloomed. But even then you may cut off next year's blooms. This only bring, uh, blooms the one time in the spring and or early summer, depending on your location. I will show you the beautiful blooms on this one that I've already enjoyed, and I'm just gonna leave it be now. And then next year, hopefully I'll have more blooms and they'll go up over this arbor here. This is the first arbor in my new rose alley. I'm gonna show you this quick one. This is Bell of Walking. This is a beautiful double clematis. And you can see it's still blooming. There's another bud on it. And it started after the Bees Jubilee and the um, Killian Donahue out front. And it looks like this one's gonna continue blooming for a little while. But this is another one that if I pruned it back, it would um, reflush. It would just take it a while to get there. There's a bud up there. So that is another type two pruning uh, clematis that would reflush with blooms once pruned after it's done blooming the first time. So this is my Warsaw Nike Clematis. Now it goes 
almost all the way up to my porch rail. It, it'll get up there if I continue training it. You see this part is kind of bowing down because the blooms are weighing it over. I have to support it uh, on this little wall here. But this was pruned all the way down to the ground here in late winter, early summer, I mean early spring. And here's where all the blooms are. I was trying to get more blooms down below and with this one, it wants to just go up so fast. And then the blooms are up here. There's more buds down here that will bloom. But this one has this long, huge flush of blooms in early summer. This will continue blooming probably for a month. And then all these, de these will have um, seed pods and then I'll just shear it back and it will reflush. Again, not as great as the first bloom, but this one is a super long blooming variety. Now this one came into bloom a full month after those up in front. And that could be the location here um, because it gets shaded a lot from the trees to my left. Whereas the front ones, they get sun earlier in the day. Now I don't know for sure because different varieties bloom at different times. And if you go to Brushwood Nurseries online, they have a, a wide range of clematis, but they also in the description of each clematis will tell you when to expect blooms. Some will say spring, summer, fall. Some will say spring, fall. Some will say summer, fall. So that gives you an indication of the bloom times over a wide range of growing conditions. Now, I will say this again, where you are located will determine what clematis will bloom when for you. So just work with it, plant different varieties. Now this one um, is similar in color to my mind as the Jackmanii, which is a very popular variety. I have just planted Jackmanii for the first time this year. So, and, and it's on one of my arbors in my Rose Alley. So I will be able to test it in very similar circumstances as far as location in my garden to see. Um, how well it will do, but I have always loved this bell of walk, not bell of walking, I'm sorry. This is um, my Warsaw Nike uh, Clematis. This has been tough as nails. It uh, grows through, I mean, it has been through a lot. And so a lot of times I will prune it back hard in late fall because we have such harsh winters. I wouldn't say harsh winters. We have such deep snow through the winter that I couldn't do it when it says to do it like late winter, early spring. A lot of times that's when we have our most of our snow. So I prune it ahead of time. This year I did not get to it and it did it no harm that we had a little break of snowstorms where I could actually see the base and I just cut it off and I still have spectacular bloom. So don't be too consumed with exactly when to prune type two or type three uh, pruning type clematis as opposed to type one. Now remember type one don't really like to be pruned, just deadhead them for the best results. So uh, that's basically it. With clematis, again, I wanna emphasize, you will not always have continuous bloom from spring to fall. You will get flushes of blooms. Same with the mini roses. So bear that in mind, enjoy the blooms when you get them. They can be quite dramatic and just enjoy growing your clematis. Now, if you want, more information on clematis, I have blog posts. And one is um, how to propagate clematis by air layering or ground layering. And that's really a fun one to do. And it's fairly simple. It does take patience, but it's fairly simple. Okay, I hope you enjoyed this video and come on back while I will share more of my garden adventures here at Flower Patch. Bye.